welcome everyone this is second video in estimation theory series i already have uploaded a video on unbiased estimator in case if you are new to the channel you should check the playlist and uh, you should also subscribe the channel because here you will get good quality video content so now let's talk about consistency so first i will give you a very uh, rigorous mathematical definition uh, and possibly it will sound very complicated but uh, when you will uh, watch the video till the very end i will be able to explain it in simple terms also so uh, just make sure that you watch it till the very end so an estimator tn based on a random sample of size n is said to be a consistent estimator of theta if tn converges to theta in probability it means what that tn tends to theta in probability as n tends to infinity in other words tn is a consistent estimator of theta if for every epsilon greater than 0 and eta greater than 0 there exist a positive integer n greater than or equal to m such that probability of uh, absolute value of tn minus theta being less than epsilon will approach to 1 as n tends to infinity it means that the probability uh, this uh, for this quantity tn minus theta absolute value will be less than epsilon is greater than 1 minus eta for n greater than or equal to m where m is some very large value of n now it might have sounded very complicated to you so let's understand in general terms in a layman approach so an estimator is consistent if as the sample size increases the estimate which is uh, produced by the estimator converges to the true value of the parameter being estimated so to understand this let us take this example that suppose in a university there are there is a large population suppose there is a population of 2000 student right and i want to estimate and they all have taken uh, suppose uh, you know a exam or an exam uh, related to any mathematics course any math course right and i want to estimate that what is their average marks that is x bar right so in the beginning i started with a sample of 20 student and i got their average marks that is x1 bar then i took a sample of 50 student i got their average marks as x2 bar i took a sample of 100 student i got their average marks that is x3 bar and so on i am taking a sample of 500 student their average marks is x4 bar a sample of maybe 1000 student their average marks is x5 bar so what do you think which average you are expecting to be closer to the actual value so it is common sense to understand that if we are taking a large sample of 1000 student or maybe 500 student then we are expecting it to be closer to the actual value so that is what consistent estimator is suggesting you that an estimator will be said to be consistent if your sample size is increasing then that value that estimated value with the help of that tn should approach to the actual value that is equal to theta right it is a consistent behavior that uh, the name is being taken because of this reason only that if you are increasing your sample size then certainly the estimated value should become closer and closer to the actual value yes or no if your estimator is not behaving in this way then certainly it will not be called as a consistent estimator okay so there are few remarks before i take some examples that if x1 x2 xn is a random sample from population with finite mean then this sometimes is asked in exam that sample mean is a consistent estimator of the population mean so this is uh, a important remark because the sample mean converges to population mean in probability second point is 
that consistency is a property concerning the behavior of an estimator for indefinitely large uh, value of the sample size n as n tends to infinity right so sometimes they may ask you that which of the behavior of an estimator is concerning the very large sample so that is the consistency uh, we do not talk about the behavior for a, a small sample or a finite value of n other is if tn is a consistent estimator of theta then infinitely many such estimators can be constructed so i am saying that if tn is a consistent estimator of theta then uh, you know uh, tn will uh, approach to theta in terms of probability as n tends to infinity that is the meaning of it so if i define another uh, estimator that is tn dash with the help of this thing like n minus a by n minus b into tn then as n tends to infinity this will also approach to theta why this will ap also approach to theta because if you calculate the limit n tends to infinity of this thing that is n minus a uh, by n minus b into tn what it will be this is b here so if you divide both numerator and denominator by n you will get what let me write here because we don't have much space so after this i am writing here so this will become what this will become limit n tends to infinity and here i will get 1 minus a by n and here i will get by uh, 1 minus b by n yes or no and then tn so as n tends to infinity uh, a by n will become 0 b by n will become 0 and here limit n tends to infinity tn as we already know is equal to theta so this will also approach to theta so that is why by uh, taking different values of a and b we can construct as many consistent estimator as we wish so they may ask you multiple choice question that how many consistent estimators are possible so infinitely many consistent estimator are, are possible if we know that tn is a consistent estimator with the help of tn we can generate infinitely many other consistent estimator now this is a very very important property and we will be solving problems using this uh, important characteristic of the consistent estimator and this is known as invariance property of the consistent estimator what is this invariance property that if tn is a consistent estimator of theta and psi theta is a continuous function of theta then psi tn is a consistent estimator of psi theta it means what that suppose I say that Tn, sorry, if I say Tn, uh, why I am writing like this, if Tn is a consistent estimator of theta, right, and I am uh, taking, uh, suppose, uh, a continuous function of Tn, right, for example, let me write it in simple term, suppose I say that T is a consistent estimator of theta, right, I know that T is an estimator based on some sample value. Now I am taking a uh, continuous function of theta that is theta square plus 3 theta plus 2 this is a polynomial in terms of theta so this is a continuous function of theta so what will be the uh, you know then if I take the similar function like uh, t square plus 3t plus 2 then this will be consistent estimator of theta square plus 3 theta plus 2 similarly if I take a uh, something like e to the power theta so exponential functions are also continuous so we can claim that e to the power t will be a consistent estimator of e to the power theta so this is what they are suggesting that if tn is a consistent estimator of theta and psi theta is a continuous function of theta then psi tn is a consistent estimator of psi theta right another important result is this is the sufficient condition for consistency that let tn be a sequence of estimators such that for all theta if expectation of tn tends to theta as n tends to infinity and variance of tn tends to zero as n tends to infinity then tn is a consistent estimator of theta i repeat it uh, that as n tends to infinity we are going to look at the behavior of expectation of tn it should approach to theta and variance of tn should approach to zero based on some large sample 
right so if you take a uh, large sampling distribution from the given population this char characteristic should be satisfied you will be able to understand if i uh, solve problems based on that so let us take the first problem so the first problem is that we have to prove that uh, uh, from uh, that is sampling from a normal mu sigma square population the sample mean is a consistent estimator of mu which is the population mean so let us prove how to prove it let me write the solution very important question has been asked multiple time in different exam so suppose i take that let x1 x2 and xn dot 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 xn be a sample be a sample of size n drawn from drawn from normal mu sigma square population okay i am taking a sample of size n then what we know we know that expectation of xi is equal to mu and variance of xi is equal to sigma square we know that because we have drawn it from the normal mu sigma square population so to solve this problem basically i want to use this condition that is the sufficient condition so uh, i am going to you know calculate the expectation of x bar so uh, how the sample mean is defined defined so let me write it now the sample mean sample mean x bar is defined as how it is defined x bar you all know very uh, from the very you know early classes that x1 plus x2 dot 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 up to xn by n right so if i calculate what is expectation of the sample mean so if i calculate expectation of x bar this will be like uh, 1 by n into expectation of x1 plus expectation of x2 up to expectation of xn so this will give me 1 by n and since expectation of xi is equal to mu so expectation of x1 expectation of x2 and all these values will be mu so i will write mu plus mu up to n times so i get what i will get 1 by n into n uh, mu that is equal to mu so if you look at this expectation of x bar uh, you have taken a sample of size n so as if you take n tends to infinity then expectation of x bar will approach to mu right and this is something that i was telling you in the remark here that if you draw a sample from a population so here again i have proved this that if n tends to infinity expectation of x bar will approach to mu now the next thing i have to show uh, if you look at this invariance property that expectation of uh, that uh, you know tn should approach to theta as n tends to infinity and variance of tn should approach to zero as n tends to infinity and here i uh, want to prove that the sample mean that is expectation of x bar is a consistent estimator of the population mean so as n tends to infinity that expectation of x bar is tending to mu now what is the next thing i have to show i next thing i have to show i am writing here that variance of x bar should tends to zero as n tends to infinity so this is my aim in the next slide that i want to show that the variance of x bar will tends to zero as n tends to infinity so first we are going to calculate the variance with the help of a sample of size n so how the variance of uh, uh, x bar will be defined the variance of x bar will be variance of and what is x bar that is 1 by n x1 plus x2 up to xn right 
and if I have to uh, calculate their variance we know the property of variance it is 1 by n square if I take it out if you do not know you need to uh, watch the earlier videos in the unit 1 so it is variance of x1 plus variance of x2 up to uh, variance of uh, xn right and uh, variance of all these x1 x2 xn is given to be sigma square because I have drawn it from the normal population so it is all sigma square so what I get is 1 by n square into n sigma square that is sigma square by n right so as n tends to infinity the variance of x bar which is equal to sigma square by n this will approach to 0 so what we have uh, concluded we have concluded that as n tends to infinity expectation of x bar is tending to mu and variance of x bar is tending to 0 so we can conclude that x bar is a consistent consistent estimator estimator of mu using this invari uh, this uh, you know this property that I already have highlighted the sufficient condition that if we are saying that Tn is a consistent estimator of theta then expectation of Tn should approach to theta as n tends to infinity but variance of Tn should approach to 0 as n tends to infinity so I have used this property to prove this and in case if you have watched the unbiased uh, uh, video there also you might have realized that uh, I have proved this that if I am drawing a sample if I am taking a random variable x which follows the you know mu sigma square normal population then x bar follows the normal distribution with parameter mu and sigma square by n so there also I have proved so uh, if if you directly like sometimes people directly write this that x bar follows the normal distribution with mean mu and variance sigma square by n but it is always better to first show and then prove the result okay so let us go and solve one more problem so if x1 x2 xn are random observation on a Bernoulli variate x taking the value 1 with probability p and the value 0 with probability 1 minus p then we have to show that this is a consistent estimator of p into 1 minus p in uh, my unbiased video also I have uh, taken this result but uh, here I am uh, going to repeat it uh, so let me first write that since uh, x1 x2 dot dot xn are Bernoulli variate Bernoulli variate with parameter p right then do you remember I have told it earlier also that I am defining T capital T is equal to summation of xi i varies from 1 to n and I have told that this follows the binomial distribution with parameter n and p this is a star result which I have used in the unbiased case also you remember this right now uh, if this t follows uh, this uh, variable t follows the binomial distribution with parameter n and p then you know that expectation of t is equal to n into p that we remember mean of the binomial distribution and the variance of t will be equal to n into p into q that is 1 minus p n into p into 1 minus p now uh, I have this uh, you know summation of x i by n so and I have taken a sample from the Bernoulli variate so if I ask you what is x bar so x bar is 1 by n summation of x i and summation of x i is t by n right so uh, this will implies what that if I calculate expectation of x bar this will be 1 by n into expectation of t right and uh, it is equal to 1 by n and what is expectation of t is n into p so this is equal to p 
okay so uh, what do we conclude from this we conclude or oh, first let me uh, calculate this uh, you know uh, part so or better write it here so i have calculated x bar or uh, is equal to t by n and expectation of x bar is equal to p so as n tends to infinity expectation of x bar will tend to p it is independent of p right and uh, next thing i want to calculate that what is the variance of x bar so uh, variance of x bar is equal to variance of uh, x bar is what x bar is t by n so that is variance of t by n that is equal to the property of variance is 1 by n square into variance of t so that is equal to 1 by n square and variance of t is n into p into 1 minus p so this n and n cancel what we get we get p into 1 minus p divided by n so as n tends to infinity where the variance should approach the variance of x bar is approaching to 0 because here if you take n very large it will be p into 1 minus p by infinity so it will become 0 so here what we have uh, shown here we have shown that expectation of x bar is tending to p and variance of x bar is tending to 0 as n tends to infinity it means it means what it means that x bar x bar so I write it to be conclude we conclude that what can you guess x bar is a consistent estimator of p but this is not my question my question is that I have to prove that this is a con consistent estimator of p into 1 minus p so how to do that so to do that we are going to use the result that we have uh, used earlier this result that if tn is a consistent estimator of theta and psi tn is a continuous function of theta then psi, psi tn is a consistent estimator of psi theta so i'm going to use this result here we have uh, proved that x bar is a consistent estimator of p right and uh, it is given that summation of xi by n into 1 minus summation of xi by n is basically what this is basically x bar into 1 minus x bar in the notation that i have used here because i am calling x bar is 1 by n summation of xi right so this is uh, this this term is x bar into x bar minus 1 not 1 minus x bar or x bar minus 1 whatever you want to write right 1 minus x bar uh, so uh, x bar into 1 minus x bar now uh, all of you know that x bar into 1 minus x bar uh, here x bar into 1 minus x bar is a polynomial polynomial in x bar right and so x bar is a continuous function so what we can write that it is a being a polynomial x in x bar is a continuous function so it is a continuous function of x bar i i hope you remember this thing uh, that any polynomial because if i suppose write something like 2x square plus 3x plus 7 this is a polynomial in x so this is a continuous function of x so here x bar into 1 minus x bar is a polynomial in x so it is a continuous function of uh, x bar it is a polynomial in x bar so it is a continuous function of x bar and we have proved that uh, x bar is a uh, consistent estimator consistent estimator of p and x bar into 1 minus x bar is a continuous function continuous function of p into 1 minus p sorry continuous function of uh, x bar right so what i am doing 
let me just remove this is a continuous function so so uh, x bar into 1 minus x bar is a consistent estimator of estimator of p into 1 minus p so this is what we have done let me summarize it because uh, it will be like slightly confusing for you in case if you do not understand so i will just take uh, maybe a minute and explain it again so what basically we have done we have to prove that this thing is a consistent estimator of p into 1 minus p so first i proved that x bar which is nothing but summation of x i by n is a uh, you know consistent estimator of p so to prove that what we did we uh, we have shown that expectation of x bar tends to p as n tends to infinity and variance of x bar tends to zero uh, as n tends to infinity so this is using the uh, result which we have highlighted earlier next thing i am going to do is that i am saying that uh, we have concluded that x bar is a consistent estimator of p and uh, this uh, x bar into this expression is x bar into 1 minus x bar so this is this is a polynomial in x bar so it is a continuous function of x bar and x bar is a consistent estimator of p and x bar into 1 minus x bar is a uh, continuous function of a continuous function of x bar so x bar into 1 minus x bar is a consistent estimator of p into 1 minus p and this was known as the invariance property if you remember this was known as the invariance property of the consistent estimator so with this uh, we conclude this video and uh, i already have discussed two characteristics that is unbiasedness and consistency uh, in the next video i'll be talking about efficiency and sufficiency so i will combine both the characteristic in one video so thanks for watching have a great day